I was watching a movie. In this movie, a man didn't like robots. He didn't like droids. And it turned out he didn't like those droids because when he was a child, a baby, his parents were killed by droids. So, as he was an adult and he had to work with droids, somebody was telling him, a droid is nothing but the result of programming. If you program the droid to kill, it'll kill. If you program the droid, the same droid to serve tea, it'll serve tea. So, he said one thing which struck me. He said a droid by itself is neither good nor bad. We can say that of the internet. We can say of that of lots of things. It is as you program. And the Lord said, you can say that of yourself also. I said, yes, that's true. Do you remember the example I said about the black dog and the white dog? The neighbor asked that owner of the dogs, which one is stronger? He said, simple. The one I feel is stronger. So, which dog do you feed? Do you feed the spirit or do you feed the flesh? Why is it important? Because a lot of people come and tell me that they have peace. I'm not talking about peace, Kari. They said they have peace. As if it's a magical, mystical thing to make everything they have peace with biblical. And I said to the Lord, how do I explain this to them? While peace is biblical, while Jesus is the Prince of Peace, just because you're peace doesn't mean that it is biblical. Just because you feel good about something doesn't make it right with God as you program. Peace is deceptive in that it comes from where or to whom our heart is devoted to. I have lots of peace eating chocolates. Chocolates gives me peace. Is that good? I say yes, you say no. But if I offer you chocolate, will you say no? You'll say yes, because you will have peace. Anu makes bitter goat curry. I don't have peace with that. Oh, no, no, no. You should not make things like that, ever. Because I don't have peace with that. Do you understand? What your mind is aligned to, you'll have peace with. In a feel-good world, are we using peace to justify our sins? Are we using peace to justify our emotions? Is this life that we call life valuable in our eyes? Or is eternal life valuable? You have to make that decision. You can't have your legs in both boats. In other words, are our lives in to Christ, given to Christ, following His footsteps? Are our lives devoted to obeying Him? Do you keep your eyes on the things above? And if you do, you will have peace with the things above. 
If you keep your eyes on earthly things, you will have peace on earthly things. And whatever earthly things are there, you will have peace with. This is a deception. Just like other things can deceive you, even peace, if it's not applied biblically, can deceive you. Go to Philippians 4, 6-7. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So that is a spiritual thing. This peace of God. But it's real. It's tangible. I say that it's tangible because I've experienced it. Even this morning, when we started worship, I was like, Lord, what is this chaos? You know what the Lord said? I got this. After all, Psalm 127 says what? He builds his house. And later Justin sang, Your house. Yes. So I said, it's your house. There was peace. Why? Because he's the prince of peace. Depends on where you keep your mind. Where is this? that which gives you peace? Is it the word of God? If you don't renew your mind, anything in the world will give you peace. Oh, pastor, I have peace. Yes, absolutely. What makes the difference in our life? It's not how much you know the Bible. It's how much the word of God changes you. And for that, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit of God to finish our race. Jesus is a pioneer and perfecter of our faith. But he perfects that faith in us with the Holy Spirit as we submit to him. And that process is called sanctification. Hallelujah. I call it being de-rascalized. And you can't do it out of the strength of your flesh, whether it be willpower or muscle power, it'll only last this long and they'll guide you wrong. Because it's not the way the Lord wants that to be. Remember the marriage? I explained how the Jewish wedding is. They send someone from the bridegroom's house to prepare the bride so that the bride knows how the coffee is made in the bridegroom's house so that the bride doesn't make coffee with salt. I had coffee with salt. That was not my bride, somebody else. They didn't know. They made coffee. They saw a white substance being added to that coffee. They thought that white substance was salt. And they added, I drank it and I looked, this coffee tastes funny. My friend drank it, took a sip and spat it out. I said, what is this made of? Oh, I made it just like Anu makes it. But the ingredient is different. In that way, the piece is also different. We all claim to have freedom in Christ, but, and I'm talking to you, what the Lord has spoken to me, is the resurrection of Christ just a historical fact? Or is it evident in you? We all believe that Jesus died and rose again. We all believe there's a grave where? In Delhi? No, in Israel. That's empty, yes? There are plenty of graves in Delhi, yes? But there's one in, in Israel that's empty. Why? Jesus rose again. But is that a historical fact? Or do you believe this? Is it evident in your life, in what you do? Go to John 11, 25 to 26. Jesus said to her, 
This is when Martha and Mary, at the death of Lazarus, yes. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? That question brings out through the ages. Do you believe this? Or is it just a fact that is there? Is it there? Is it real in your life? What is the proof? As Andrew Womack says, if you are arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? What is the proof? Last week I saw, I talked about being the salt. Go to Matthew 5.13. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Yes? Flavor. Why do you add salt to something? Flavor. To understand, but there are other purposes of salt also. When I was training in the kitchen, if we spill something like water or oil, we put salt in it immediately. Why? Because then it will add friction to that surface. So people don't slip and fall, yes? We wipe it. We don't leave salt there. We wipe it up again, yes? But salt's primary purpose is what? Seasoning. Just like that, you are a vessel of what? Honor, not of dishonor, yes? Go to Mark 9, 49-50. For everyone will be seasoned with fire. And every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourself. Have peace with one another. So this salt is related to being filled with the Holy Spirit, but it is also related to the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yes? Like I said last week, meditate on this. Yes? And I also mentioned last week that all the apostles, except one, that's Judas, died. Except for John also. Yes, he died. Yeah, all, all of them died, but they were killed, yes? John died of an old age. Same thing with the deacons that you find in Acts chapter 6. You hear about Stephen, who was martyred. The rest, except for Nicholas, was martyred. And Nicholas became a heretic, according to tradition. So I asked God when he told me, to encourage people. How do I encourage people with this? Remember last week I was talking about this? And the Lord said, what is the result of you being filled with the Holy Spirit? And I had to think about that. And the Lord said, don't think too hard because you know the answer when you're missing the answer. And the answer is this. It's simple. I'm free to be who God created me to be. Before, I was free to be me. I had my agenda. Now, I have an agenda. But at that agenda, more and more, is equal to the agenda God has, the plan that He has for me. Yes? Are you free to do that? What is the evidence? I always say this. I do not lie. I don't have to lie. I have confidence in God, who God made me to be. Does that does not mean that I disclose everything that is not that's being stupid, yes? If you ask me something which you don't need to know, I'll tell you on your face. You don't need to know. But I don't lie. Do, do, do you understand? Why? Not that I'm perfect, 
but the Lord perfects that which concerns me. I have the confidence to say to you that I am a work in progress. How do I have that confidence? People told me as a pastor, you should not show your vulnerabilities. You should show yourself strong. I said, I'm not strong. God makes me who I am. That is very different from me showing my strength in my personal strength. I have, a con- I have the confidence to say, I'm a work in progress. Why? Because I know Jesus. I have the confidence knowing that I am the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of excellence. Meaning, I don't let anything pass by. The Lord, if I do that, the Lord will tell me, yes. Do, do you understand? And I have the confidence to say that the devil has nothing in me. Go to John 14, 13. Jesus is saying, I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. Hallelujah. And he's filled with the same Holy Spirit that I am. I can say that. Hallelujah. I may not be perfect. And if the devil comes at me with my imperfections in the past, first of all, he knows better. I just remind him, go through Jesus. I belong to him. Who do you have peace with? This is why I keep telling you that the new covenant we have in Christ is better than the old covenant. In the old covenant, you will hear the way that leads you to salvation. If you're going this way, you'll hear a voice behind you. That means you are past God. You're doing something on your own. That's why it's behind you, yeah? And he says, walk this way. Then you turn around and you go this way. I'm just making an example, yes? So, do you want that? Okay, because that is the way to salvation. Or do you want the way to salvation in you? Who's Jesus? I'm the way, the truth, and the life, yes? What does the schoolmaster do? That's the Old Testament. He leads you. Versus what? You becoming the holy vessel of God. And that is your decision, not God's providence. You decide. So I ask again, because God asked me, how is Jesus Christ's resurrection evident in your life for all to see? I taught you about DTE. What is DTE? I added an I to it. What is D? Demonstration. Jesus demonstrated that he was from God. There were miracles. He taught the precepts of God. Yes. Then he encouraged people. And then those who were, who were his disciples imbibed. Do you understand? Yes. So when he encouraged, it was spiritual, not natural. When he taught, he taught the things that were of spiritual nature, not natural things. Because why? You just read Matthew 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall. Do you understand? Everything is opposite. The Bible talks about the people who turn the world upside down. So, for example, Jesus has used me to turn water into the medicine for what people need. Yes, when I told the man of God of this miracle, he didn't believe me. So that's impossible. 
Of course it's impossible. I didn't do it, but the Lord did it. You were there, yes? To understand. Even now God does that. So, why do you say that it was impossible? Either I'm lying or these miracles that were done were false. That means what? Any miracle can be false. There are people who do weird healing. They call what pranic healing or something other reiki or whatever. Do you understand? But miracles can be false. Even riches can be false. During Jesus's temptation, the devil offered him all the riches, all the kingdoms. But what is it? Proverbs 10:22 says, "The blessing of the Lord adds wealth and brings no sorrow." I hope it's Proverbs 10:22. I, I don't have it written. But the but the question that the Lord was asking me, which I'm asking you, is that: Do you practice? resurrection living and many people say oh i will do that when i have gone into the eternal life but what is john 17:3 say this is the eternal life that they may know you the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent so do you know jesus and do you know who the true god is that means you have and you are in eternal life eternal life with them to to you understand life but not eternal death you are meant for eternity no matter what life or death you choose do you do you understand yeah yes so i have chosen life but as part of my calling i've chosen to to do what i've do right now but here so think some of us will have to change our vocations because i won't need to preach to you about faith because you will see jesus face to face hallelujah so i'll be out of the job yeah not as a worship leader not as a musician hallelujah So I have OPS. Hallelujah. No, I'm just kidding, but do you understand? But here the power of sin is broken. Yes, what what does it say in Romans 8:2? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Yes. All this is the evidence that you need to show. Yes. Second is the debt of our sin was cancelled. We go to Colossians to fourteen. Yes, he is nailed to the cross. Whatever sin says, whatever is required, he is nailed to the cross. Yes, we were redeemed. That means the devil who held you for ransom, he Jesus paid the price. When Rabbi was here. I used to hold her for ransom, and he learned I had to pay the ransom price. What was the ransom price? Cookies. So, become pastor. This is the ransom price. He gave me a box of cookies, and then I'll send Rebi home. He was too small to understand that she's going home no matter what. Yeah, to do understand yes. But later I thought, okay, maybe this is not a good idea because he'll think all pastors demand ransom. Yeah. So but but do you understand the bad guys held us for ransom Jesus paid the price yes and then we were made a new creation in Christ so your past doesn't matter and then not only that the scripture that saved me 2 Corinthians 5:21 it says he became sin who knew no sin Do you understand Jesus became sin who knew no sin so that we become righteousness of God in him 2 Corinthians 5:21 
all that is there i could go on actually if you make this list it's long but how do you make that evident in your life you keep your eye on the things about how did jesus as disciples make it evident in their life they were not afraid of death meaning this life meant nothing to them go to matthew 10:28 and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell you can only be there and do that if you're filled with the holy spirit otherwise you will run every time death approaches you why because you're afraid of it do you have the helmet of salvation in Ephesians 16:17 say take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god everybody plays with the sword of the spirit until they get a cracked head and then they throw the sword spear javelin fear and they shield of faith and they run away or they call their pastor where the helmet of salvation helmet what protects you do you understand do you believe us go to 1 corinthians 15 55 oh death where is your sting oh hades where is your victory what are you afraid of failing stupidity i can guarantee you in writing that you will be stupid and you will fail i can give you a certificate of stupidity why because i have a phd in it yes why are you laughing no do you understand but not god who perfects that which concerns me Hallelujah he is calling me to this calling Do you understand and death has lost its sting The doctors thought I almost died or in fact I was dead and they tried to resuscitate me when I came to I told the doctor I said don't use that machine on me again So like what I said, don't ever use that machine i'm not going to die on your watch so no one talked to me like that i said you haven't met people like me i said don't ever use that machine i said okay okay cuz i was serious because it left marks all over my body yeah oh death where is your sting what are you afraid of I don't have a death wish but I'm not afraid of dying because the moment I'm not here I'm with Jesus hallelujah and that's a better place because I don't get fat I can eat all the pizzas I want hallelujah it's a good news Elvin yeah oh Elvin is looking very serious no but that doesn't mean I don't do anything on earth do you understand I have a calling to fulfill yes Go to Colossians 1:27. To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Glory is eternal life, the helmet of salvation. But also, when you tell it not to rain, it stops raining. Who is glorified? If you are, then something is wrong with you. Let God be God glorified. You've been with me when traffic was cleared. Do you remember a long time ago there was a line of traffic? The Lord said, get out of the car and there's another way. Remember? 
I got out and there was another way. Lo and behold, I said, turn your car around. At that time you had what? Centro, yes. And we, I was raising, I was driving that Centro once and I was raising a drive, um, guy on a motorcycle. I was doing one, maybe 110, 120. Every time he tries to pass me, I go a little faster. But later said, the Lord said, slow down. I said, why? I'm going as fast as well. Slow down. Turned out that there was a flat tire. Remember that? I was doing 110 with a flat tire. Yes. So the angels must have been busy filling the tire with air every circle it made. Yes. Like I said, I, I need to apologize to them once I get there. Yeah? But here's the thing. Is this life more valuable or is eternal life more valuable to you? I'm not telling you to answer me. You cannot do that unless you renew your mind in the Word of God and you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is why the Bible tells you to keep your eyes on things above. And you will need the Holy Spirit to do that. Without that, you will be dead in the water. Remember, it is not our race. But it is set before us. This race that, that we have to run. We can only run by the faith that the Lord gives us. And we can only sustain ourselves in that race if we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And this Holy Spirit is not a magical, mystical force or event that happens. God is not partial. All you have to do is ask. The disciples asked and they were filled over and over again. And what are we going to do now? We're going to ask. Hallelujah. As we continue worshiping.